Hello, <clears throat> excuse me. Hello, hello, hello. I'm going to say hello a lot of times because the audio is always really terrible for the first eight or nine seconds. So that's probably about enough hellos from me. It is this week in WordPress episode number 171. And I have got a new monitor and I've just realized that I'm n never going to be looking in the right direction. So I'm going to be all <laughs> over here. I have no idea where I'm supposed to look. I should probably have moved that. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. I'd really appreciate it if you fancied sharing it. Just we're going to be talking and introducing one another. Why not flick open Twitter or Facebook and uh, share wpbuilds.com forward slash live. Um, you can see we've got a lovely panel of people here today. As always, Paul Lacey is with me. Thank you for joining us again, Paul. And uh, it's all right with you. I'm going to hand it over and you can introduce today's marvellous guests. Cool. Well, what's funny for me, Nathan, is... It for me, with this new monitor you've got, you're basically looking at me. I don't know if we're all in the same position oh, on our stream. Yeah, that's like true, yeah. On, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking directly, diagonally towards me. So I'll, I feel like I'm under pressure here. Then you're keeping me. Right. There we go. That's yeah. it. I figured it out. There we go. There oh, we go. wow. That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so great to be back this week. And um, I just wanted to introduce the guests, actually. So first of all, first time on the show... Uh, we have Cami, who is the owner and designer at Web Cami Site Design, which is located in Seattle. And um, also, you are a the in fact, you're the original GoDaddy Pro ambassador, the first one, so original and best. And you're located <laughs> in Seattle. And and also, um, I noticed Remkus in your Twitter bio, you're a big Pearl Jam fan. So I think there's some crossover there because Pearl Jam are from Seattle. Oh yeah. So, Cami, did you ever go and see them? Were you a fan? Of Pearl course, Jam. and I, I actually went through a Thanksgiving Day buffet line with Eddie Vedder in 1991. So, yeah. Oh gosh. I literally oh, just had cool. shivers. I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Remkus is going. Remkus is really upset about this. Yeah, I oh, thought we were going to keep it light. I thought we were going to have fun now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, well, let's let's swiftly uh, introduce you, Remkus, in that case. So, you are a WordPress veteran, web performance aficionado, and you're also the co-founder of WordCamp Netherlands. Thank you for that. And WordCamp, WordCamp Europe as well. WordCamp organizer and aspiring strongman. I mean, look at his arms and a car nut. And Pearl Jam fan as well. Jealous Pearl Jam fan. Also, oh, you work for yeah. Servbolt, which is next level high performance managed hosting, which last time I called it Serverbolt. But if you do go to the serverbolt.com, something <laughs> yeah. fun quite happens actually. So go to the the real website is is it serverbolt.com? It is. Good. I got it right this time then. But if you do go to serverbolt.com, just check it out. It's kind of fun. So Oh, okay, that's intriguing. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to do that right now, but yeah, okay. I'll mm. I'll try that later. So yeah, thank you, Remkus, for joining us. Thank you, Cami, and obviously thank you, Paul. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. One one other thing though, Nathan. I mean, obviously here in England we had uh, a huge night last night and the whole country was more or less on the edge of their sofas. Not the whole country. Not the whole country. The whole country most, of, most of it, you know, with the exciting news that Justin Tadlock has built his first WordPress block. Oh, I see. Yeah, very <laughs> good. Yeah. Nice. Nicely done. See yeah. what I did there. Yeah. yeah, that was clever. I, yeah. you, I like the way Spend you Spent a few hours planning that one, Nathan. That's, we, next, that's the, next level bridging. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> there was a there was a football match here last night, but I was telling Remkus just before we started the, the show that I don't care. Um, mm. I'm totally happy with the outcome. Uh, I, I'm, you know, you the best I'm, team win. That kind yeah, of I just yeah. some people really into their football, and it just has never really gelled with me. So, uh, commiserations if you took that badly. But um, anyway, there you go. Let's get on to some WordPress news, <laughs> shall we? This is our website. It's uh, WP. Oh, do you know what? I nearly introduced it as WordPress.com. <laughs> I'm getting a bit above my station. The uh, This is WPBuilds.com, which is, is not that a Freudian quite... slip? Are yeah, you, are you, very. Are you about to announce <laughs> that's something? Right. Yeah, that's, that's where I want to be. Um, WPBuilds.com. If you fancy staying in touch with what we do and the episodes that we produce and so on and so forth, there's a box uh, on the header of the homepage and you can subscribe there. That's probably the best way to keep in touch. But we produce episodes like this each and every week. And uh, like I say, go and share it on Twitter now. And uh, if you want to put your comments in uh, on today's show, that's that would be absolutely lovely. But little quick thing, if you're going to do that, you'll need, and you're in the Facebook group, 
you will actually need to go to chat.restream.io forward slash Facebook or FB, I should say. Otherwise, you will remain anonymous and we won't know who you are, which may be the way you want it to be. That's fine. But Lee Matthew Jackson doesn't want to remain anonymous. He's clicked that link and he says, hey, folks, great to see another awesome lineup. That's nice of you. Thank you, Lee. Um, okay, so let's get on with this week's WordPress news. We've got, first up, got a piece over on WP Tavern. I don't know if any of you three are into building your own blocks, but Justin, this week, whilst it was the 4th of July celebrations, Justin, if you follow him on uh, Twitter or anything like that, Justin posts quite a lot of pictures of cats. He's really mm. got lots of cats. And he takes them, I think, quite seriously. You know, there's lots of pictures of cats and he's treating them really, really well. And one of the things that he does on the 4th of July is he locks them inside, puts on some background ambient noise and makes sure that they don't freak out because there's fireworks everywhere. And so he was doing that this week and uh, got a bit fed up and decided, well, dang it, I'm just going to go and write myself a block. And so he did. And this piece really, I guess, aimed at developers was trying to express just how easy he had found it. He found that the documentation was brilliant, but also annoying. There's sort of a bit of a dichotomy there. But he ended up in a, just a matter of hours putting together a, a block, which you can see on the screen. And basically, it's a, uh, it's a little single-use block. It does breadcrumbs inside of a block, so it tells you where you are within the website. He then goes on to sort of describe how to use lots of little pre-built components to, to add some fun to it. So he was able to add little toggles for whether you wanted it to be on or off. He was able to add colors so that you could change the background color and the color of the text and so on and so forth. And and he was, obviously he's got a lot of heritage doing this kind of stuff, but he said it took him a couple of hours and he's now up and running. Essentially, this piece is a bit of a clarion call. Get on if you are in this space and this is something that you are capable of, or even if you feel that you might be on the cusp of being capable of it. Go and read the documentation and let's make the block ecosystem bigger and better than it already is. So there's me summing it up. I don't know if anybody has anything to say about that, but if if you do, now's the time. Anybody, free for all, go for it. So um, do you know what? I think it's um, building a block. Uh, I think it's a good exercise to do if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily uh, the best example of look how easy this is if it comes from Justin. Uh, I also think that the indication that it already took him a couple of hours, hmm, it, it sounds long, uh, especially considering uh, having built blocks myself with ACF, which is not very complex ones, but if you have existing PHP code, it's relatively straightforward to make it do what you want it to do. It certainly didn't cost me hours. Um, mm -hmm. And ACF, uh, for me, still solves it nicer and better. I would say really solid documentation. Um, so I, I don't know what the message is here, if I'm, if I'm honest. Yeah, I think it, it was... I don't know what the... I don't know if there's just like a general sense that people are not doing this as quickly as one might have hoped. I think maybe there was an expectation by now that we would be almost flooded with a whole variety of blocks. And it, it almost seems like, from my perspective, the block creators have gone into building block packs. So they've gone for the approach of, we're going to build a whole ton of blocks and sell them as, a, as an individual uh, one-off price and you get 58 different blocks. That seems to be a really popular way of doing it. So I yeah. don't know. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Anything, Cami, Paul? Um, well, I, I'm i in the Beaver Builder community, and I'm using that to build websites. So while I, I hear two hours to build it, I think that's a long time, too. I'm somebody who's building websites for directly to customers. And if I had to spend two hours developing one little thing like that, it would really not be advantageous for me, correct? So I, I, I see the people building a whole and selling a whole packet. So I have choices when I'm, I'm doing that, but um, it doesn't make me want to sit down and try myself at this point. So. Hmm. Uh, the thing, the thing I would have to say about it is 
um, just in response. I think that, uh, first of all, I would also use ACF uh, to build blocks because I've got no JavaScript skills whatso whatsoever. Literally, I'm just like cut, paste, and hope for the best sort of thing. <laughs> and, um, and if I ever have a problem with something in JavaScript, I usually head to something like Fiverr and hope that someone can help me there. But it's very rare that I need help with that. So I've got no aspirations that I'll ever create a block in the correct, proper way that you're supposed to do it. Um, and I think that the way that ACF does it is cool for someone like me that um, isn't creating a product. I think what Justin's doing in this article is, as usual, he's jumping headfirst in with the block stuff because he's really interested to explore it, almost like a hobby to a certain extent. But I think what he's kind of saying is that it's taken him two and a half hours to create a product, basically, what he's kind of saying. like It's not something he's going to sell. It's not something he's probably even going to release because obviously almost everyone uses an SEO plugin and they all come with a block for, for breadcrumbs. But he was, he's probably yeah. just wondering uh, how, how difficult is it to create that functionality and have it as a draggable block. And it's taken him two and a half hours and he's, he's done it. Uh, I think um, Justin's quite a big fan of the, the whole block experience. He tries to stay to, to give both sides of the argument as well. But I think um, he's always going to be on the glass half full side of things because he's interested in it. And uh, for me, I'm just not a fan of blocks, really. Um, I'm a beaver builder person as well. Mm -hmm. And there's some of the things even today that we're going to talk about that kind of keep writing off my interest in blocks for the moment but maybe it will come back but i'm certainly not going to be creating any block plugins but for someone who has just in skills what in a way this this article to me is simply saying is if you've got the skills there is an opportunity at the moment to reinvent things we already had and make a product that might sell or make a name for yourself mm -hmm. so get on board now and do it um we're reinventing That's things that already exist i think that's that's not what I got from the article. I didn't read it in full. <laughs> okay. <laughs> full disclosure. Yeah, no, no I mean, I, 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 I hear what you're saying, Paul. It's um, um, I don't, I, I don't know the tone of voice of the tavern messages in to, in 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 uh, in total. To be honest, I don't know who the intended audience is. Um, I don't know. If we're trying to sell those who are currently not on board by starting into block development, I don't think this is the selling, uh, uh, the, the best selling argument. I don't think it is. It's not working for you. Yeah. Okay. No, and and, it's, and, and, and I'm not just basing this on my own opinion because that's N is one and whatever, but uh, I, I, I keep hearing the same thing. If, if the, the, there are third parties out there um, that solve this particular problem, better. Um, you have Genesis blocks, uh, which allows you to do it on the Genesis framework, create, a, create your own blocks with a, with, a, with a UI. You have ACF if you want to dive in a little bit deeper. And then you have full native. In my opinion, it should be as easy as, as you can think of full native. And then, you know, if you really want something tough, there's extra roots, but it's, it, it, it's inverted in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. That's which, an which then argument. makes it a very hard argument to make. Like, in, like Cami says, if you're in the Beaver Builder community and that's your preferred way of working, you don't care. Um, <laughs> and 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 I I understand. I've I, I've built uh, plenty of sites with Beaver Builder. Uh, I happen to have switched from Beaver Builder to using native Gutenberg blogs because I like that way of working. If I can minimize my overhead, I will, and that will have my that's a higher priority than having convenience. But the whole, we build something and then let's just see how people start using it. Uh, come on, it's been two and a half years. Yeah, that's a really good point. It has been a long time, hasn't it? And we're just beginning to push these these things out. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting point. Mm. I'm on um, board with what Remkus just said, totally, to be honest, um, in terms of, like uh, we, we've built this thing and then there's this kind of narrative that has caught on throughout the world of WordPress that yeah. you have to get on board with this because it is the future. And what I haven't seen 
is any evidence that it is the future because we we don't know what the future is and we are reinventing things that have already existed and i so yeah. I, in an ideal world i would like to think that gutenberg blocks is the base and beaver builder would then be an extending that or elementor mm -hmm. would then be extending that in a you know radical way if you need to have it in a radical way but um i i i like the whole prioritization of things that were built inside of the Gutenberg project, uh, we're two and a half years in. Um, I think we've seen very limited effort on uh, performance, for instance. And WordPress 5.8 will actually bring the first two small things that help in actual performance on the what is being loaded on the front end side of things. Like there's this huge push for, and we'll pick that topic later, uh, uh, core vitals. Why aren't we seeing that very prominently in this project? Why aren't we seeing developer focus way more prominent? I don't. I just don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, yeah. It's a it, it's a really interesting point. Paul, Paul and I sort of seem to be sort of slightly different sides of the same coin. I'm kind of bullish on Gutenberg just because. I really don't appear to need any reason to be bullish about it, whereas Paul's much more kind of well. I'll be I'll be bullish about it when I've got some some solid proof. Um, I'm in the trenches though. You like are. Like Cami is. Yeah. You know, me and Cami, we make websites for people, mm -hmm. and we're waiting for something that is really. I'm speaking for you here, Cami. I'm assuming that you're <laughs> probably thinking what I'm thinking, but at the moment, there's a number of things that aren't solved and won't don't look like they'll be solved for a long time. And we'll come on to a few things where you can see people are solving some of these problems, mm -hmm. but I'm not prepared to jump on board with them because I'm like, I need to see that that's a long-term yeah. product that I would buy into that would solve that problem with the Gutenberg editor. If the core Gutenberg editor wasn't committed to solving it itself. So I'm still, I'm still kind of, excited that it's a way better text editor than the, than the classic editor. Yeah, um, definitely. And yeah, it, it, it seems like um, it, it's heading in the right direction, but logistically when you're building websites for people, you have to be able to implement it properly. And my worry about jumping over is that it's going to slow down my process, right? And, um, you know, right now the process that I have set up works for me. So, you know, I fully intend to make a switch when that, the time comes, but I just don't feel like it's there yet for me. Yeah, it's a really good point. Yeah, yeah. And Paul, what point well made about you actually building client websites? And if it's if you can shave, I don't know, an hour, two hours, seven hours off a website build, it yeah. just makes no sense not to shave that time off with the tools that you've got so far. Yeah, it's all very well. Uh, having a bit of time. Actually, it is quite interesting because Justin does make that point right at the top. He, he Full disclosure, he says something along the lines of, I've got lots of time now because I'm I'm working as yeah. a as a journalist for WP Tavern. So not only am I, um, I've got some time to play with these, but also in a sense, this is what I do. Um, maybe, mm. maybe the likes of you, Paul, and you, Cami, you just simply don't have. But nice Remkus dropping in the ACF option. And the Genesis option is it still called that? Is it still called Genesis Blocks? That's now totally free, right? You, there's no no yeah. pay paywall on that at all. I think correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, Remkus, just one quick thing. I think we're getting everybody's audio going round your system and coming out a little bit. I can see on mm. my audio that when we're speaking, with it's kind of coming back, looping back through yours. I don't know if it's possible to. You can probably just turn us down a little bit. Uh, at your end, that'll... yeah, that might just do. That it. It's, it's not a big deal, yeah. but it, it, if you can, better now. Uh, it's I more think... when we're talking and I'm talking, and I I don't see anything. Yeah, let's let's yeah, let's just say it's better now. I think it um, is better. It was yeah, like a great. kind of wobbly noise constantly in the background. Yeah. It wasn't major, but I think it's gone now. So yeah, that's yeah, good. So I'll do it. Okay, thank you uh, for that, Remkus. Right, the next one then. Let's talk about something slightly different. This is something that is maybe I'm the only one of, amongst the four of us that's going to care about this, but this is something that I really am keen to talk about. This is Castos. If you if you ever listen to a the WP Builds podcast, we push all of our podcast content through Castos. It's a 
let's say it's a SaaS platform that allows you to create podcast audio tracks, but they also have a WordPress plugin. And put simply, you don't need to have a third-party solution. You can do everything to do with your podcast inside your WordPress install. So we were talking a minute ago about saving time. This simply saves time. If you didn't have a WordPress website, well, that might be a different kettle of fish, but obviously I do. And they've received three quarters of a million dollars from Automatic. Now, it says on the site here, Yoast, but I think Remkus in a minute will will tell us it's not Yoast. It might be a different Well, it, it, it might still be Yoast SEO as the company, Yoast as a company. But uh, uh, Yoast and Marika is what I have uh, understood to be the investors. And Okay. So it's some yeah. private, private, perhaps some private money on the EOS side as well. But um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't know. But uh, no, okay. But automatic certainly, and some configuration of Yoast or Marika, and and the the intention here is to is to help them expand their private podcasting offering. So private podcasting is well, it's I guess it's a little bit like a membership site in that you can create a podcast, but you can limit those people who can consume it. And that, to me, is exactly the opposite of what I want to achieve. If I create a podcast episode, I would like every single person on earth to listen to it. <clears throat> but um, <laughs> they do. <laughs> but uh, but the that, intention that's not already is already happening. Uh, well, you know, there's seven. Remkus, or eight. Remkus yep. said he would only come if that was if that was. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> but the the I, I hadn't really thought that podcast private podcasting would really have much of an audience or a purpose. But then reading through this, it kind of became clear to me that maybe it does, and it, it's not something that I would ever have assumed would happen. But the idea being that maybe if you're in part of a big organization and rather having the daily briefing, somebody just records a podcast, uploads it onto the post, it goes into your um, your CRM based inside a WordPress or something, and it's like almost like the daily briefing done for you. Anyway, this is quite a lot of money, and I'm really intrigued as to why Automatic are putting that money here. It strikes me that... If you watch the news and you you keep your ear to the ground in the technology space, you're probably aware that podcasting, A, during the pandemic, lots of people became podcasters because they were literally looking for outlets. So that, that went through the roof, people actually making content. But the audience didn't increase, but apparently now it is. Now that people are getting back into their cars and doing their commutes again, that's when people traditionally listen to podcasts, not entirely, but often. And so the audience has now started to pick up. So we've got this double whammy. Creation is happening much, much more. The audience is picking up. So it's it's all for the good. But I'm assuming that Automatic would like a slice of this pie. On the dot-com side, they've got it all sealed up. You can do podcasting if you pay the subscription to dot-com. It's all taken care of. But in the .org side... I don't know what the the finger in the pie will be for automatic, but now they're they've obviously got some sort of skin in the game um, with podcasting, which I just think is really interesting. Again, the floor is open. Anybody interrupt? I'll, I can start. Um, so first of all, I really like Castos as a product. I think it's really good. I was using it just the other week and went through the whole onboarding process and everything. Um, how easy it was to set up and get listed in the different directories and all that kind of thing. Great, great, really good. Um, also, super cool that, uh, you know, you can, if you're just a podcaster and you just want a simple solution, you can actually go to wordpress.com, like you said, Nathan, and have almost mm. everything taken care of. And the onboard, I've never tried that that route, but I imagine the onboarding is pretty simple. Yeah, they've basically got a block. You just drag yeah. in the podcast block and, uh, and it just... Yep. Takes care of it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, this was this one is definitely you could come up with all sorts of conspiracy theories about this this uh, this one, and most of them are probably true. Um, fact check, probably <laughs> true. But um, I mean, the the thing the thing about this is is that you know, automatic and WordPress.com have this podcast uh, platform within their own platform, and both of these platforms want to get into this private podcasting. 
and Automatic has thrown some money at Castos to do the work, in my opinion, and then to share the results and share the resource. And and as, a, as an end user, that's going to be great news for anyone who wants to start podcasting. So that's great news for them. Also, we had, um, so that's that's kind of like the, the obvious fit. Um, we have sometimes on the show, Matt Medeiros, who works for Castos and, um, and he's also been really critical of Automatic in the past and WordPress.com and and the founder, uh, Matt Mullenweg, and, which has been really uh, useful, actually, because then Matt Mullenweg has had interviews with Matt Medeiros and they've had discussions. There's still, in my opinion, loads more that the two of them could could thrash out in a, in a longer conversation. And so there was some funny, um, I saw some people uh, making some funny kind of um, conspiracy theories like, oh, it's, I mean, actually, that was the first thing I thought, just as almost like a joke inside my own head. Oh, that will shut Matt Medeiros up. He won't be allowed to say anything bad about <laughs> Automatic anymore because his boss has just, you know, had a load of money from them. But I doubt that's the situation as well. I think that um, that it's the Automatic one would never put that in place and that Matt Medeiros will probably continue to say what he thinks about the whole situation and all that does is improve things through communication anyway. So there's another conspiracy theory. And then the one that, you know, Automatic is um, controlling the whole project, you know, and is building the block editor really for its own product, wordpress.com, which again is probably partly true, but here's the thing. So anyone can get involved in WordPress Right? So you can get involved and influence how it goes, which means Automatic can get involved in WordPress as much as they want and throw resources at it. And as a result, they will be able to influence it more. And so sometimes we think, well, Automatic is controlling thing. We've got Matt Mullenweg, but whoever throws the most resource at the WordPress project influences it the most, it seems. And that's my look on it, that this is just the nature of the environment of the entire project. It's just how it's set up. So... That's all I've got to say on that. Other than one more thing, congratulations to Castos for the investment round because uh, great product, and I'm sure you're going to do some really good things with that um, cash. And good luck in the future. Cami, anything or Remkus, anything? Um, well, I will just say that, like from the big company um, viewpoint, I see where this would be incredibly useful for a company like GoDaddy that has internal channels and ways to reach their they're always trying to reach their own employees and stuff like that. And then on my, my side as a small business owner, I have a little Facebook group with about a hundred designers that are friends of mine. And this would be a great way for me to attempt a podcast without having to really go out there and do it and try it with just my small group at first. So I think it's a great idea. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. Emkus, anything? I think I concur with what Paul's, um, I think it's interesting from many different points of views of uh, wanting to have an influence on where this is going. Um, I think we are also also looking at just very lay of how this technology can actually be used. I think there's way more possibilities than just uh, what we're doing right now. Uh, and then internally, I think there's a lot of uh, movement towards um, communities uh, turning on audio for whatever reason. Um, and I suspect that market is going to grow rapidly um, mm -hmm. for the simple reason is that there is a lot of... Um, so anything you publish on, on a platform that's owned by someone else is going to be, be met with some sort of restriction. Right? There's stuff you can talk about. There's stuff you can limitedly talk about. However, if that's self-published, you can do whatever you want. There's no, um, no worry of having to have your stuff censored. And I, I think with what we're seeing now is that the move towards um, podcasts or audio uh, uh, information is probably just at the cusp of something really, really big. I think uh, if the last 18 months have shown us anything, then the need for connection has become bigger and bigger. So um, um, 
you know, a, a website only appeals to the visual component. You need auditory as well. So I, I think this is this is long overdue, and I, I totally get why um, both um, uh, Yoast and Marika and uh, Automatic uh, invested in this for various reasons. It's kind of weird, uh, you know, going back like 10 years before podcasting was the big thing that it now is. Honestly, I'd have put no money on audio becoming a thing. I would have thought, no, it's all going to be video. It'll probably be AR, AI, uh, sorry, AR and all of that kind of stuff. And yet here we are where it's just growing exponentially. The only the only reason I can think that that may be is a a bunch of content creators are producing really great content. You know, some of the podcasts out there just sound like really expensively, carefully made. Um, mm -hmm. There's some private podcasters. What I mean by that is people who are just doing it by themselves, for themselves, who've managed to create breathtakingly cool content, every bit as good as what I would listen to on radio. But also... Um, the fact that people are able to just get on with other stuff. I regularly just carry on with what I'm doing, got my podcast in my ears, mm -hmm. and so, yeah. That's exactly what I mean with if we're if we're visually entertained, we can't do anything else. Right. If we're auditory entertained, we can do stuff we see. And not only that, you know, you can be instructed to do stuff from the actual, instance, yeah. you know, there's lots of recipe podcasts, and I would have thought, no way. That needs to be that needs to be visual. You need to see how. No, it, no, 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 no. You just now chop the now do this and do that, and it's amazing. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing, and it's growing. Nobody can deny it, and so I think it's very clever to get your finger in this pie. Again, thank you, Paul. I didn't say well done to to Craig. Actually, Craig was one of the very first people we had on the WP Builds podcast. I think he was like episode fourteen or something like that, and he he started this company when there was no light at the end of the tunnel. It was just a go. He was just trying something, and he stuck with it and stuck with it, and now he's reaping the rewards. And I think they're, they've grown from, I think, seven to 13 people. And so, bravo, well done. And uh, mm. I'm really, and I'm really happy well. to be a customer. Yeah. Mm. Uh, just say I'm enjoying reading through the comments. So thank you, everybody who's commenting at the moment uh, while mm. we're talking about this. Uh, one more thing I'll just say. Uh, I'm really glad um, that that these two platforms are, you know, collaborating in a way because I would much rather these two platforms be the kind of winners than the recent news that we heard about Facebook offering a platform now. Um, so there is a, there's an upcoming, whether it's released or not yet, Facebook is getting into podcasting because guess what? Uh, audio is one of the most trusted um, media types. We still trust what we hear on the radio. We still trust what we tend to hear on podcasts. We don't really trust what we read in the newspapers or on the internet or on the TV these days. So audio is one of the last ones that we trust. Facebook can see that. It's getting involved. And guess what? If you want to sign up to use Facebook's platform, you have to agree, agree that they can reuse your content and mash it up. So the, what, what will happen if people realize that, that think, oh, Facebook is, is the way I should go. That's the easiest way to do it. As opposed to even WordPress.com or Castos doing it themselves or another hosted independent platform as such, then basically what we'll have is mashup podcasts that are almost like a, a kind of montage of opinion that doesn't work in context, but allows people to, or companies or big tech or whatever, to create narratives that simply aren't true, which is going to be ridiculously dangerous in politics and religion mm -hmm. and all other divisive stuff. And so... Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I think we've got to, you know, podcast as much as possible, support the support people on their own platforms so they can do what they want and no one can reuse their content. That's so right. That's, support podcasts, everybody. Yeah. You know, <laughs> give them money. The give, best give thing ever. Podcast money. Here's yeah. the other thing about podcasting is the barrier to entry is seriously low. You you really don't need any equipment. You need a phone and an idea. And, and in, in this case, you need somewhere to put the audio, which Castos does for you. You don't, need, totally you don't need clever yeah. audio equipment. You just need a piece a of good audio. Mic. Yeah. I mean, it would be great to have all that, but there's no, you know, you don't need editing software. You don't need a great deal of skills. There's lots of free software. Audacity, cough. Don't know what happened this week. Um, don't know so if you I saw think, that. 
Sorry, go on. You carry on. Yeah, I just wanted to say the one of the comments uh, that just came in, uh, maybe nice to highlight, Jordan Haynes saying, I don't watch normal TV at all. All my information comes from podcast, YouTube. I think, I think that that's exactly what it is. The, we have a choice now to consume whatever, whatever we want, wherever we want, how we want it. Um, and a lot of that, for us at least, uh, uh, Nathan and I discussed this pre briefly before the, before the show, uh, I don't watch TV. I don't care for TV. Nor ha I haven't had proper TV in uh, almost 20 years now. Uh, but I do consume a lot of information in just very different ways than TV. And I think maybe, um, I think maybe the 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 rest is catching up to this idea. As in, I don't really want to watch this. I don't really want to. I don't care for this radio show. I don't care for this TV show. Let me just choose what I like to hear. And podcast is a wonderful example for that. Like, There's a lot of comments in here saying um, driving and learning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, and the nice thing as well is you don't need a connection. If you've got a podcast player, basically, yeah. and you set it up right, which is the default in most cases, and you subscribe. I think they're start beginning to call it follow more than subscribe. But if you subscribe or follow a particular podcast, then it will just download the latest episode as it comes in wherever there's a signal. So, you know, you could be in the middle of absolutely nowhere and you've got content ready to go. And there's a couple that Paul and I listen to, which have got nothing to do with WordPress. And we, we, we actually message each other quite frequently to say, have you seen the latest episode is out? Um, and we, neither of us have even listened to it, but there's actual genuine excitement because <laughs> the latest episode is out. But I just love getting on with other stuff at the same time. Uh, walking, mm -hmm. I basically don't walk anywhere by myself now. You know, if I'm going to the shop, even if it's like a three-minute round trip, I'll still put a podcast on because during that three minutes, I could find some little chestnut of what I want. Yeah, thank you for all the comments. Uh, Jordan's reflecting that. He sort of said, you know, as Remkus said, he doesn't watch TV. I'm the same as Remkus. We don't have an aerial, so we can't get regular telly. We've got the telly, but it's connected to like the BBC iPlayer and the internet and things. Um, and then, oh, hi, Phil. Um, there we go. That's nice, Phil Levine. The important thing is knowing the source. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I suspect we'll <laughs> there'll be a, a plethora of really bad content, but the great thing is you can just unsubscribe and you never hear from them again, yep. <laughs> which is lovely. Um, and then I have got to mention that I have a podcast that I love that helps me sleep better at night. So there's all of these podcasts with wow. people that have like voices that just put you out, and it's an archived <laughs> podcast, but it's called Game of Drones. And it's boring recaps of Game of Thrones. And even if I have a lot on my mind, and I'm one of those people, I've got so many irons in the fire with work, I will lay down to go to sleep and I can't sleep because I'm thinking about work. And my Game of Thrones podcast just puts me out. That's That genius. is an awesome example yeah. of a great <laughs> idea for really a podcast. Good. I'm, I'm listening to one at the moment, which is it's a 10 part series and it's all about how the bat, what is the German band who did the, the Scorpions? Oh, okay. The, remember the Scorpions yeah. who did yeah. wind of change, how yeah. it's, it's entirely possible that that song was paid for and written by the CIA <laughs> <laughs> to, to encourage the downfall of the, uh, the former Soviet union. It's uh, fascinating. Yeah, it's would, really yeah, surprising. Sure that. Ten <laughs> hours of content. <laughs> it's not we, we could do one. Boring WordPress news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we've done there that. Was this is episode one hundred and seventy-one of the boring. <laughs> <laughs> There's no change. Um, mm -hmm. That's very kind of the Facebook user who is anonymous. If you click on the link in the group post at the top there's a facebook link to restream um and if you click on that we'll know who you are but you like, might like to remain anonymous um and cameron thank you for joining us again i listened to welcome to night veil vale to help me sleep my um one of the most popular formats is apparently kind of like real crime uh, mm -hmm. just stories about people solving crimes so it's like the detective story but over on the audio side, and there are hundreds of those. I th I'm not sure it's called real crime. I'm sure there's a there's an actual word for it, but it's criminal. something like that. Criminal is a really okay. Popular Say it again, Cami. Criminal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. I'm following an interesting one called uh, I think it's called I don't even know what it's called. It's called I think it's called dissect, mm -hmm. and he dissects music like 
Oh, I, I, I got hooked, uh, uh, um, I think, by uh, Kanye West's, um, whatever the long title of his album was. I, f I keep forgetting it, but it's uh, the whole how that album came to be. And it's, it's so diverse and so brilliant in what he does. And he dissected every single bit of it, like from loop to idea to concept. Like everything was explained. I'm like, yeah. Wow, you can talk for thirty minutes for about three minutes of a song. That's yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> have you Remkus totally going off piste? Have you ever come across the YouTube channel by a guy called Rick Beato? I have not. I'll send you a link when we finish if we remember. He does the exact same thing, but with uh, YouTube. It's Rick Beato, B E A T O, and he he spends hours dissecting songs, and he's utterly brilliant. Um, and I enjoy that kind of stuff. Wow. Okay. So we've gone down a total rabbit hole of podcasting. Um, does anybody have anything else to add to that or should we move on? I'm kind of enjoying this conversation. So <laughs> it's right up my street. Okay. Let us move on to something a bit different. Um, I just wanted to, Paul, I don't know because of the time, I don't know if you wanted to go into this piece in depth, but um, I did want to just mention somebody who's in our Facebook group and often contributes um, really great content about all sorts of things, often page builders. Uh, it's a piece by David McCann. Uh, he's shot a YouTube video called The Block-Based Widgets Editor. And with regret, I didn't actually have time to watch it, but because I like him so much, I just wanted to give him a bit of a plug. Paul, was there anything you... Did you get a chance to see it, or should we just... Put I've not watched in the it, show notes. Uh, okay. again, because it's, you know, blocks and it's just not my thing. But um, David uh, McCann's Facebook group, uh, I'm not in too many Facebook groups anymore, but David McCann has one called Dynamic WordPress. Is that with a C or a K? On it's the... with a C. It's not hey, like yeah. the old product. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Dynamic WordPress, and it's it's my favorite Facebook group. I, nice. you know, it's, it's one of the only ones I actually comment in because it's just feels so relevant to me all the stuff that's going to be talked about in there so oh, that's yeah lovely. well done david mccann for what is probably even though none of us watched it a really good video because we know all his previous ones are really good that so. was it was on the strength of that that it was a bit like we were saying about podcasts later you, earlier sorry you um you know once you've seen a few pieces of content by a particular person you get to trust that they're going to put out something good it's 17 minutes long it's called the block based widgets editor and uh, david mccann is the author so if that's your bag go and uh, go and go and give him a thumbs up all right this one is very much in cammy's and mm -hmm. paul's wheelhouse i think beaver builder has got a new update i'm going to say nothing more i'm just going to let paul wander into this one yeah this is version 2.5 and um most of the people who know about this release are pretty excited about it. There is a bunch of things that people have wanted for a long, long time. And those are some major improvements to existing modules. So what a couple of those just to highlight the pricing table. So there are, there are add-on packs that in, have pricing table modules. And they have pricing table modules because people found that the, the core one for a long time just didn't do everything they needed it to do. And even those add-ons had things that it didn't always do. Things like be able to switch between monthly and yearly on a pricing table is something that people were using hacks to do with kind of using tabs and then two pricing tables in each of those. But they've completely rewrote the pricing table and it works really, really well. Uh, one of the big updates as well on an, on an existing module, again, is the menu module. So that was because I work with Beaver Builder, as in they uh, pay me uh, to, to work with them. And one of the things that I was doing recently was some work on the next version of Beaver Thema, and that was to build four header templates and four footer templates. And what I found in doing it is that if you couldn't use any code, which was one we wanted to do, we wanted to make sure people could create headers and footers with not having to use any code, that the existing menu module had um, problems with it that you just couldn't, you couldn't do it basically. You couldn't have a um, mobile responsive header and footer without using some code. So they'd already got some plans and then me building out those um, menus, everything came out in the wash as to what was missing uh, for, the, for that module to basically be as perfect as it can in the Beaver Builder way, which is the Beaver Builder way tends to be get the person to the point 
where they can then customize in their own way rather than having absolutely everything in the user interface. But probably one of the, the nicest updates on of, of this particular plugin uh, update is the, what's it called? The, um, let me just check what it's called. I know what you mean. It. It's the this thing here, isn't it? At the yeah, top, the, the outline panel. The outline oh. panel. So this is something that we've, you know, the block editor has to a certain extent as a visual tool. And I think that Elementor has something like this and Oxygen has something like this. And what it is for anyone who's not looking at the screen is kind of like a tree structured view of your entire page. So all the rows, all the columns, all the modules. And you can drag them around in this panel on the side rather than, for instance, let's say you want to drag something right at the bottom of the page to the top of the page. It's kind of complicated. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can't even find, you know, if you've got a very complicated page, you're kind of like, where is that module? Because you made it semi-invisible. <laughs> and you can mm -hmm. and you can find things easy and move them around. And I'm also recently been building out some templates for uh, Beaver Builder, templates for the that might be coming out in this release and also some template for their other plugin called Assistant Pro. And I was using the beta and the alphas all of the time. And this particular outline view was just such a massive time saver. Um, they're also been focusing on performance type things as well. And I mean, it's just a massive release. So if anyone is using Beaver Builder and then it's, it's worth going and have a look when this comes out to see what's new and definitely read the release post because you'll see everything that's in there. And there's a lot of time savers in there for developers and end users and freelancer agency types like me. So um, well done to the team. I've seen them doing it uh, from semi inside of the team. And uh, they don't even want to talk about version 2.6 yet. But, you know, I tried to talk to them about 2.6. They're just like, let's get this version out and super stable, which is what they always do. It always comes out and it works straight away. Mm which is one of the reasons I love it as a product. Can I ask you a question, Paul? If yeah. So the structure, again, if you can see it on the screen, you'll see it's nested. So you've got the parents are indented and yep. then child items are indented and then more indented. If you, if you grab, uh, let's say, a parent, uh, one of the lowest level elements, can you drag and take the children with it? Does it you can move a, everything around. Yeah, yeah you can. I mean, nice. when I was using this for the templates, it, there wasn't the ability to drag and drop things around. And then uh, what... They Beaver Builder release these these plugins out to people who want to beta and alpha test it, and a lot of feedback came back saying it's nice and useful, but we really really want to be able to drag things around, and then they've made that possible. So, okay. yep, exactly. Yeah, I think I think I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure if you drag a parent, the children come with it. Okay, Cami, I'm gonna sling this in your direction if you wish. Yeah, I'm super excited about this because um, you know. Paul said, sometimes you just are kind of lost in your in your control panel working on everything in the dashboard and the ability to see that outline is gonna make a huge difference. And then um, I, I also, uh, in addition to Beaver Builder, started using the Page Builder Cloud. And so I, in my head right now, I'm wondering, I hope all of that is visible there too, because then as I'm looking through all of my design library, I'll be able to just take a quick look without having to uh, dive directly into that. But um, I love Beaver Builder. I love everything they've done. Um, I had the opportunity to meet Robbie at one of the uh, word camps that I was at and I'm just so grateful to have something that allows me to work in such a fast way and it also allows me to give the client something so everything I see here is something that will also help the client when they're managing their own website so I just think of the lay of the land view that they're going to give everyone is just going to be a huge uh, huge plus so um, Cami, the, the the assistant plugin that Paul mentioned in yeah. the in the very near future, they're um, Paul. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, in the very near future, they're going to take on a lot of the heavy lifting that your Page Builder Cloud has. Oh, and I would, good. I would, so great. you'll be able to sync everything back and forwards, and I would imagine that it would play nicely with their own product in terms of this this panel that we've just been mentioning. Oh, so. that, that's great news. Yeah. That's yeah. great news. Yeah, it's good. Uh, Remkus, I don't know if this is your bag or not. A um, little bit. I, I mean, anytime a product 
that is hugely uh, uh, um, effective in solving a problem. Uh, also, then uh, finds a way to improve itself and make it faster and more performant. I'm I'm all all for that. Um, I like the outline. So Gutenberg has the same outline, but doesn't allow for the mm. moving around. Um, now, there's an interesting thing I'd love to see ported back to WordPress. I think that's coming. Is it? I think that's coming in in a in a fairly in fairly short order. Okay. That's certainly been mentioned so, as a yeah. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, we recently um, published an article which had close to ten thousand words on um, how to speed up WooCommerce. Um, and you can imagine there's a whole bunch of uh, hierarchical stuff happening from top to bottom. Um, having that outline is a huge time saver. Yeah. Like, where did I do that? Where is that? And, and especially if it's so long that the outline, you click on it, it doesn't even fit in the screen, you know you need it. Um, yeah, so yeah, I, I, I think that's a great move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, a, it's kind of looking at what the, the commercial rivals are doing and, and using that. I echo Paul's thoughts. They're very thoughtful bunch of guys aren't they and they uh, they only produce stuff yeah. which works when it first comes out which is which is nice okay Unfortunate paul, in a way too sorry Cammy, you go ahead i think yeah, paul i have a quick question for you mm. as i'm thinking about this outline do you know that if a global element is moved if it moves it globally hmm. uh, i don't know because I, I don't really use the global elements but that we should talk about that after and figure out specifically what that that would look like and do I you mean it's it. like you've got nested child elements inside of a global element and well, you I, I, the yeah, child. I, like a global row the themer as well so you know you've saved a template for a page and you've got the outline and you move something is it going to affect everything globally if that element has been saved as a global element module don't know don't know probably probably okay. because they tend to the level of detail, I mean, having worked with, I mean, you know, talking with Justin and Bren and Danny and Jamie um, and Billy, uh, those are the people I tend to speak to the most. And their approach is just, you know, you can suggest what you think is a cool idea and they will just apply full-on critical thinking to what you just said and, exp and explore all the different, they're, they're never in a rush to say, we need to do that because our competitors done that or something like that. And I think that that's why there's so many people who choose Beaver Builder and then stick with them. And mm -hmm. I'm not just saying that because I'm technically on pay, you know, I'm not on official payroll as such, but I've, I was a fan for a long time before. And I, one of the really cool things that they've got coming out for the next version of Thema, which is, I think it's in the alpha um, of their current Thema alpha, it's so at the moment, let's say you've got something like Beaver Builder and you have a blog post situation. Mm -hmm. So two options, you can give the, the client the classic editor or you can give them the block editor. So the block editor inside Thema or the block edit or the, the classic editor inside Thema. And a lot of the time you're like, well, I've already taught them how to use Beaver Builder, how to do rows and I've saved rows for them and that kind of thing. But what you can do with the new version of Thema for anyone who uses this is you can use Beaver Builder inside a single post Thema single post template. Does that oh, make sense? It's, it's like what's it, Inception? Oh, good. Yeah, Divception is what Nathan was just saying. Because yeah, um, the no Inception. It's like Beaver Builder inside of Beaver Builder. Yeah, then, it is. Yeah, yeah. Beaver Builder Inception. inside Beaver Builder. So so from your client solution point of view, if you're if you're able to make performant websites that pass all the tests, and we'll talk about that in a minute as well. Um, then, yeah, you're going to have more divs. And I think the phrase that the guy who founded Oxygen invented was divception, actually, uh, when he was kind of taking the mickey out of other page builders. You're going to have a few divs, but the end user doesn't care. And as long as the website is still performing and not causing mm -hmm. a detrimental effect to them, then basically you can say, hey, this is how you use your landing pages. And guess what? I don't need to show you how to do crazy hacks in the classic editor and you can ignore the block editor and you can use these saved rows that I've created for you to create your blog post. And obviously you can be locked in to doing that, but everything everything I'm seeing in the Gutenberg world is locking you into one set of blocks or another. 
So it's no different to anything that's already going on there. I think you're always locked in if you're not using the classic editor for content in one way or another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So nice updates come in for end users and they're totally listening to the market, but still doing their thing, which is let's consider every option we make. Yeah. Make this long, make, give this longevity. It needs, it can't, it can't, it can't lose its longevity. I've thought of a segue for the next piece, which mm -hmm. is that at the page builder summit, which, which happened a few months ago, um, the one of the talks was Paul. Paul was talking about core web vitals, and he was relating that to p pushing out pages in Beaver Builder. And you managed to get fabulous scores, which is obviously what everybody wants with Beaver Builder. And you had a few little tips and tricks for how to do that. It was really great. And so on the screen now, I'm going to be showing a nice update from WP yeah. Rocket. I'm sure we've all heard of WP Rocket. Um, it's yeah. kind of almost like the go-to, I would say, if people mention a caching plugin. I don't know if that's true, but it seems to be on the top of my list anyway. Um, they've released recently 3.9, and there's some really nice stuff in here. But I could drone on, but I th honestly, I think, Paul, you're better at this stuff. Would you... Would you lead with this one? Yes, yeah, sure. So first of all, about that talk and Core Web Vitals with Beaver Builder. Um, the the point, purpose of the talk was just to show that not necessarily with Beaver Builder, but probably applies to a lot of the, the more classic page builders that you don't need the caching plugins to achieve the scores. So my talk was to achieve those scores without just whacking a caching plugin on top of it and going, hey, look at that. What a great job I did there. I had no idea how I got the scores. The point was building the website up from the beginning. Now, just to sort of caveat that, um, uh, the guy who is one of the um, founders of Convesio, the hosting company, I heard him on a podcast just the other day, and he was saying that he's noticed that a lot of people are accidentally creating performant websites using the block editor. So it doesn't matter what page builder they're using. You mentioned Oxygen. He mentioned Beaver Builder, he mentioned Divi, he mentioned Elementor. So Oxygen was in there as well, that people were more accidentally creating more performant websites with the block editor that had previously accidentally created non-performant websites. So there's definitely a thing that basically, if you don't know what you're doing, um, then choose your tools correctly. But if you are an agency or a freelancer and you're a professional, then something like Beaver Builder is possible to achieve those scores by just designing websites properly and doing things in the right way. Now, to, to kind of put an even bigger polish on that, you've got tools like Dopey Rocket, and they've just released 3.9, which is, mm -hmm. is actually my pick of the week for later, so you probably don't need to say that anymore. Um, but it's an amazing release. They've complete, and, and here's the thing about Dopey Rocket. They, they were recently bought out uh, by a huge hosting company in, I think, Germany, somewhere in Europe anyway. I think they're called OVH. And OVH is, is a giant. It's French, I believe. Yeah, is it but, French, um, is yeah, it? Yeah. I, I heard so. a rumor and from multiple people that this was actually one of the biggest acquisitions that has happened this year. So there's ones that didn't even get hardly any coverage. So everyone, I mean in terms of cash, cash transferring yeah. hands, right. Okay. So, you know, you had the Cadence one, you had um, Liquid Web buying all sorts of different brands, um, and this one was actually a lot bigger than people probably imagined. Now, that's just hearsay and rumor. But if it is uh, true, then they're clearly doing things that with that money that make a lot of sense to end users. So this particular 3.9 update is taking on Core Web Vitals in a very good way. So you've got other plugins that I've seen out there that basically try and trick what's going on at the end uh, to the Core Web Vitals testing tools. They just trick them and it's wrong and it will get your website banned probably at some point or delisted or deranked in Google. Now, Dopey Rocket have been very diligent in this article, at least they're saying they are, to say that they're approaching this in a way that isn't just trying to get you better scores. It is actually also trying to improve the user experience for your end users as well. So it's true Web Vital, uh, Core Web Vitals improvements. And to get to the point of what they've done, there's a number of things they've done, but there's two major ones. One of them is the way that they are um, creating a feature where you can defer the JavaScript on the page until the user starts interacting. Now, this isn't a brand new feature. They've already had this in there before, but it wasn't the most stable of things. Nobody's got this right yet in a plugin. They've completely rewrote it, and this is version 2.0 of how they delay JavaScript ex execution. 
And they show some examples on this site of using this on an Elementor website, which is generally Elementor gets all the bad press for being the one that creates the worst scores at the moment, or some of the older mm -hmm. ones do as well, but definitely Elementor get hammered in the communities uh, for that compared to some of the other solutions out there for your scores. They use, it as an, they use an Elementor built site as an example that's got animations on it and all sorts of stuff going on, and they show what the scores were before and what the scores were after just from this one um, aspect of the tool, just from this deferring the JavaScript. I've tried it on my site that was reaching around 92 and 100, uh, 92 mobile and 100 and the Beaver Builder site with no caching plugin. I installed this and obviously put the caching on and I got 99 and 100 and it was pretty impressive. My compliance thing broke, but it turned out that that was already broke, my compliance uh, cookie, cookie thing. So it was nothing to do with WP Rocket. Um, so it's pretty impressive. They've also got another major feature, again, tackling the core web vitals and again, being a human improvement tool, which is where they are reducing, thanks, re removing or reducing unused CSS on your page. And this is a beta function. And what it does is it analyzes your page, just like the Light Lighthouse tool does, and is able to say, hey, there's a bunch of CSS on this page that isn't being used. So let's just remove it and output a there's only the CSS that is used on the page. Again, I've tried it. It is working really, really well. And it gives you a much better score in terms of Lighthouse cracking down on you for having wastefulness in your site where you're using too much CSS that you're not even using on that particular page. So for anyone, you know, this to me is flattening the curve as such in this whole argument between, hey, I'm using this tool and I get these scores. So to me, it's now like, hey, I use this school, this, this tool. It's a diligent choice, and I'm using these techniques. The reason I use this, tech, this tool is for my end users. And guess what? We're all scoring the same now for, if we're professionals. So it's just an amazing update. If anyone is using Dopey Rocket, just, just check it out. It's, uh, just see what it does. Thank you, Paul. That was great. Sorry, I'm very long, keen. Long to, <coughs> no, long no, no, no. It was great. It was really good. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really keen to get Remkus in on this because mm -hmm. uh, so we're on the plugin side of things over here. You know, take this wherever you go. But mm -hmm. Remkus is the company that he works for, Servbolt. They've got a different way of doing this, and I'm keen to get your whether it's this plugin or what you guys do. Feel free to just promote. That's fine. Uh, we'd like to know. Yeah. Okay, so. Um... So the end goal is to have the user experience be the best one you can possibly deliver, right? That's the goal. Um, what WP Rocket does, um, and Paul, you when you say you turn caching on, what you're actually doing is you're turning optimizations on. Because caching in itself will help you in some ways, but mostly if you just have crappy hosting. Um, uh, at Servbolt, we have a little bit of a different approach towards where should problems be fixed. And that sort of drives us to look at directions of where we are solving stuff. So for instance, one of the, we have a hardcore, and I think I've said this the last time as well, we have a, a truly hardcore focus on performance, which means we take different decisions in getting to the point of delivering that performance. So we start off from uh, having uh, uh, you know, short time to first bite, being as performant as we possibly can be in that direction. Then if you look at optimizing, the, um, the best way to go about it is to build your site performant for what it needs to do. That means you as a developer, as a site owner, you determine where you want to load what, when you want to load what, and at what time do you want to load that specific thing? So that's all your assets, that's your CSS, that's your images, that's your JavaScript. So if we're solving things correctly on the hosting side of things, and I'd like to think we are because the um, WP hosting benchmark reviews confirm so, then there are those cases where the front end has a lot of ways of you know, optimizing. So what WP Rocket does is 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 really good. Uh, I especially enjoy their CSS, um, critical CSS generation stuff like that. Um, but there's ways of getting to the core web vitals, hitting everything 100 
without necessarily installing a plugin. That means you are conscious in how you develop your theme. Like I said, you, you load what you don't want to load and you know you make, you make your, your proper decisions. And what we've done is we've built a tool called Accelerated Domains, which is an add-on to any uh, Servbolt hosted site that essentially accelerates your domain and then Core Vitals is a small port, spart, uh, sorry, small portion of that. So it's a, it's a little bit of a different approach, um, but it optimizes to the point where the entire delivery of those assets are done in a, um, uh, let's just call it the, the most optimized way of servicing the client request from your browser to the server, then getting the feedback and then responding that as in the result in your browser. So we optimize in two directions and it's a, it's a different layer, I would say. So um, uh, th 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 this, this is no hate on WP Rocket, uh, uh, far from it. Um, but from our perspective, stuff is being solved in the wrong layer, if that makes sense. Yeah. Having said that, if you are on our hosting, our latest version of the Surfbolt Optimizer plugin 3.1 adds, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, collaboration between WP Rocket and our plugin. Oh, okay. So we do optimize for it, but one of the things that we optimize for is by turning off their caching. <laughs> okay. Because it actually slows it down on our servers. That's fascinating. Our own version on server level is much faster. So do you hashing solve it at the right place is what we're saying. But I, I, I genuinely like what they're doing with regards to how they're constantly focusing on the optimization side of things on the front end. So yeah. I, I think this is a great example of if you have crappy hosting, and crappy is from my perspective, no, no, no hating, but just how I look at it, uh, then that's a great tool for solving a lot of problems. Yeah. Uh, but if you have a high performance site or if you need high performance or scalability and all of that, um, there's more that goes into the mix of solving that problem. Uh, Remkes, one day we should get you on the screen and you can show us around mm. what's, what we actually click and point and touch and what I'd configurations. Love that. Yeah, that would be good. That would be really nice. Well, let's make that happen. Um, we'll chat after this. But thank you. Um, time is running short, so we're going to have to go. Uh, I apologize, Cami. I left you out of that discussion. Okay, I, I just want to say real fast. I use WP Rocket half for years to install it on every single website I built. I love it. Nice. Mm. Can Certainly. I, can I just say one quick mm, thing? Of course. Um, first of all, I don't disagree with anything Remkus just said. Actually, that was uh, totally agree with all that. And one thing I noticed when you can do the lighthouse tests, um, I don't know how I found this button. I found this button on the test results the other day where you could simulate what your scores would be if you were able to change certain factors. So if you had a high um, time to first bite, you could see what happened if you reduce that and it would show you what your scores would, would be. Yeah. And the time to first bite was really shocking actually because 10 milliseconds, when you get to the kind of, you know, you're in the 90s or the 80s or the 90s on the scores, 10 milliseconds gives you 1%. 10 milliseconds is one whole percent on the scores. And I was yeah. like, wow. It really, you know, it is really making a difference to have that absolute root of your site on the best hosting that you can, whatever yeah. your budget, uh, put the most you can put into your hosting. You know, we can't all afford, you know, the best solution, but you're kind of wasting time on the other levels and, unless you've at least got something half decent at that level. But 10, 10, 10 milliseconds, 1% 1 per, 1 on the scores was shocking. Yeah. So that, that's essentially what we're doing by having our uh, extremely short time to first bite. Yeah. Yep. Done correctly, uh, it's somewhere around 60 or 70. Yep. And that's oh, 600 oh. or 700, 60 or 70. Yeah. Yeah. That, okay. That's a, that's a tiny amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, Peter Ingersoll, thank you very much for making a comment. He also just, he's just basically just saying, hang on a minute. Let's just, it, let's just talk about content. The core web vitals thing seems it has taken us all by the by the neck and dragged us into this conversation. We seem to be having it rather a lot. And he's saying, "Don't forget about making good content because good content can can help you in Google uh, as much as other things." So you know, if you've been if you've been producing tiny articles and obsessing about why you're not scoring because your content is rubbish, even though you've got a really fast website, well, 
have a really fast website with great content. Um, there we go. Thank you. Content and, is still king, but yeah, there's a there's a new focus in town, which I think uh, um, just needs a lot more before it becomes a mature thing. Yeah. It's still not part of everybody's thoughts as they're building sites, and yep. we have a long way to go there. Yep. 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 Okay, right. We'll just quickly move on. Very short of time now, just to try and get through some of these things. So that was, by the way, that was on the WP Rocket site itself. I'm sure you could find that. Uh, I just came across this. I literally have no idea if it's any good. I just thought I'd put it out there. It's a deal on a plugin called PostX. Caveat emptor, no idea. It's kind of like a query block. It makes... Uh, queries. Paul and I were sort of saying, I don't know, do you really want to get into this when Gutenberg and Core are going to be tackling this head on? But I just thought I'd mention it. I know people love all these lifetime deals. So anyway, post X. There's a free plugin that sort of does this already. Oh, good. What's that called? It's by uh, Ronald Eureka, Media Ron, called Custom Query Blocks. Perfect. Maybe get that one instead. Custom Query Blocks. You know, it's, a, it's no lifetime deal. It's on, it's on the repo, right? It is, yeah. Okay, custom query blocks. Uh, thank you. Uh, is that it? Is that the URL you've just dropped in? That is the URL. It's a different URL, but it's the right plugin. Okay, oh, let me just grab it. To, and to briefly it. summarize what this plugin does, it kind of creates you grids and masonry type layouts and carousels of posts, but it's kind of killer feature is the ability to create archive pages in most of the themes, which is a tricky which thing for a lot of well. that's that's brilliant i mean uh, the 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 thing the reason we actually put this in the in the news wasn't to so much say hey you should check it out and maybe buy it i don't even know if you can still buy it but that's it was <laughs> yeah i mean the timer seems to have run down but i did check and you could still get to the checkout it was more a case of you know products like this come out and you can spend money on them but i just cannot tell you how many products i've bought in this manner that then just became irrelevant and didn't have a business model to move on any, anymore. Mm. I'm not yeah. saying this product doesn't have one, but I'm saying how can a product at the moment have that is from a relatively newcomer, it seems, to, you know, I've never heard of the company and a lot of people were saying that in the in private discussions in Facebook groups and stuff like that. I'd personally never heard of this company and a lot of people hadn't. So how can someone genuinely invest in something at the moment when nobody really knows the direction of the block editor and what the block editor is going to do in core with full site editing. Because the moment the block editor has this as full site editing and, and it works really, really well, if that ever happens, that pr plugin has no, no reason to exist anymore. So if you've built it onto 25, 35 client sites, and then that company naturally has to move on and there's no plugin updates getting done, and the Gutenberg block editor is constantly changing around it, then you've got egg on your face and you've got to re-engineer what you've done. Again, yeah. not saying it's just that plugin. It's just That's just my main narrative on why I stay away from, oh, look, here's a new blocks thing. I'm going to dive in and start putting it on client sites. I just don't want to do that to my client sites at the moment. I I'm, want to I'm loving with, what Remkus, I've just yeah. been I'm, I'm looking on another screen about what this custom query blocks does and I'm loving it. But yeah, Chris Hughes, you can refund it, mate. You yeah, can yeah, use right. yeah. Chris Hughes will have bought it. Um, yeah. And completely not relevant to anything. I love that image. I, I don't know, know why. But I really like that image. Just a bunch nice. of colorful squares. It's very really satisfying it. to look at. Yeah, it's just great. I don't know why that yeah. is. Um, okay, there we go. So uh, we recommended something. We completely withdrew it. Here's a free one. This looks nice. Let's go with that. Uh, okay. Right. A couple of very quick um, bits of self-promotion. I hope you don't mind. The first one is to say that I did a uh, did a podcast episode with um, with the guy Mark Westgard from WS Form this week. And if you have no idea what WS Form and why you might like to use it as your form plugin, I actually got him on the screen. So this is a bit like what I was just saying to Remka, so it would be nice to get you on the screen. I did a uh, webinar with him and we had a few people along for the ride. It was nice to have you. Uh, and he demoed it. I just think this is such an incredible plugin for forms. You don't have to listen to me. Go and check it out. Go and watch the episode or go and read some reviews and what have you. I just really like the look of it. And in that vein, we have another one coming up this week with Leslie Sim, who was actually in the chat a minute ago. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she's still here. 
the gossip. She said. She said what? She's here for the gossip. She's here for the gossip. Well, here's some <laughs> gossip, Leslie. We're doing a uh, another of these webinars tomorrow at uh, roughly this time, 2 p.m. Is it 2 p.m.? Yes, 2 p.m. UK time. And the plugin enables you to write content, blog posts, and newsletters at the same time. It's all done with Gutenberg blocks, and you can hide things in the newsletter that you can show in the content, and you can put them both in the content or just in the... Anyway, it's absolutely fantastic it's so Fabulous. good that remkus uses it yes <laughs> there's yeah then so we I, ought to have a badge remkus uses it <laughs> um, i think i'm actually on there on her on her you site, are on uh, her uh, website yeah you're like yeah. one of the people and i'm surprised because paul lacy's usually on any website that you come across like this but not on the newsletter i've got it? a newsletter yeah so, yeah but I, I i've been wanting to publish a newsletter for years just never got around to it uh, but I I also find it uh, I'm way more in the WordPress dashboard than I'm in other systems. So for some reason, it never happened. And then I saw Leslie uh, tweet this, I don't know, uh, half a year ago, maybe longer. Time is blurry. Um, but uh, I quickly realized that it allowed me to use WordPress as I knew it and still use MailChimp as the delivery system and mm -hmm. have them take care of subscribers and, and things of that nature. Um, and I, I was in love. I, I loved it. Uh, and especially um, uh, the openness of listening to feedback and processing that into either solutions or even new features. Mm -hmm. I think she's just brilliant in how she does this. Um, so um, yeah, I, I highly recommend it. I believe it supports ConvertKit it will, it will in about three weeks. So, Chris, oh, okay, yeah. on refund the refund because I've just I'm just reading. She sent me a message on Messenger. I don't know the name of this one. I know it. I've seen it, but I just can't pronounce it. Is it called Clavio? Is that how you pronounce it? Mm -hmm. Clavio is coming, um, and ConvertKit is coming. And she sent me that message uh, about two and a bit weeks ago, and she said four to six weeks. So let's yeah. say it's about four weeks from it, now. So. But, but the, the whole thing is really well thought out. It yeah. works just brilliantly. Yeah. And I've... I, I've... And I, I, I honestly cannot recommend this high enough. I think for 2021, this is my favorite plugin. Yeah. I'm totally in agreement. At the minute I saw it, it was, it was the fact that you could have a block which could be in both one or the other was totally what I wanted because yeah. I don't want to put, I'm going to embed this as a video in the blog post, but what's the point in putting that in a newsletter? It doesn't belong there. So you put it inside a container and say, exactly. don't show this in the newsletter. And exactly. then it just doesn't. And then you could have a button which goes in the newsletter, which doesn't belong on the website because it's pointless. It's brilliant. It's really, really good. There are six, I think, that's not six, is it? That's five, Nathan. Six, um, six little blocks, which enable you to do all manner of clever things and super strong recommendation. Anyway, yeah. if you're not convinced, come to the demo tomorrow. She's going to show you how it can be used and, and build and things. And follow up. her on Twitter because she shares everything. Yeah, she's great. Mm. It's all built in the open. Anyway, crikey, it's like... This is like the newsletter glue promo moment, moment isn't it? The, but know, it's great. Really good. Really, really good. Uh, Nathan, I don't use newsletter glue, but one thing that is finally just clicked in my mind of because I've, I've still because I don't have a newsletter, I've been like, I still don't get what all the what all the buzz is about. But the fact that you write your blog post and your newsletter yes. at the same time, it's one just, thing. It's, yeah, like a mental encouragement to to not have an extra barrier to kind of like, oh, do you know what? I'll do the newsletter tomorrow, and then you don't do it. You just do it at the same time that you're yep. writing the content on your website. And now I get it. I get it now. They've got and, this killer. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, I apologize. You carry oh, on. I was just going to just say about WS Forms. Um, I've not watched your video, Nathan, but what I have seen is how people have reacted to it. And, um, they don't yeah, like it's it, just, do they? It's me. No, they oh. do. They do. They do. Um, obviously, it's like, can I watch a video about yet another WordPress form plugin? But from what I understand, people who have watched this, and you've said it too, this isn't just another WordPress form plugin. This, I don't even know what the things are, but from what I've seen in people discussing it, it's kind of taken it to a next level. It's got a I console. Just, I just wish they'd sort their branding out because it, I was just turned off from the branding immediately. So if, you know, please get the branding sorted out and you'll, 
probably have Cosine. a lot of eyes on the product. I think. It's it's got like an actual console so that you can see what's what any errors are. It's got like an actual calculator. So instead of like trying to do it all with ridiculous you know, if you're trying to work out, okay, if you buy this product and then you buy this add on thing, you just do it with a calculator. You press buttons on a calculator. It's brilliant. It's so good. Um, anyway, yes, come and watch this tomorrow. You'll enjoy it, I'm sure. And if you don't, well, you know, I don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> and what's the last thing? Remkus put something in the show notes that he wanted to share with us this week. I don't know if Remkus covered any of what we're about to see moments ago where he was talking about Serve Bolt, but uh, he's got a piece here called The Serve Bolt Stance. Oh, no. No, this, no. So this is all well, about sustainability did, and green hosting. Go. I kind of did, actually. So this is uh, this is um, this is our CEO um, explaining that the the whole quest that we're having in wanting to deliver um, uh, fast and and uh, performant websites uh, doesn't end with just offering exactly that. Um, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's an open letter explaining why the performance side of things is not the only thing on our mind, but indeed, how are we doing this in the most sustainable and green way? So um, the so what I did kind of cover was when I said time to first byte, that's a great indicator of how long the computer has had to process your website into a something in the browser, right? Mm -hmm. So the shorter your time to first byte is, the less energy it consumes. Simple as that. Nice. So that's how we're building what we're doing. So one of those things has, is in um, sustainability is also in energy, uh, not wasting energy in producing something that uh, could be done smarter. Uh, with our partner Trefader, which you just showed, is the, the CO2 compensation that we're doing for everything um, um, that we can't offset in the normal way with renewable energy. But it's something I'd like to see more happening people understanding that um, green hosting is not just saying, hey, we have renewable energy. It, it's also about how does how do you spend that energy? How efficient are you with that? Um, and I thought that the, I am of the humble opinion that this deserves more attention. Yeah. You know what? I think the environment, the, the, it, it just seems like more important than ever. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know exactly where. Oh, Cami, let me think. I don't, don't know if you're situated on the, the West Coast, but some of the stories that I've been hearing about, you know, uh, Southwest Canada and the north e the oh, Northwest yeah. of the United States. And you just sort of think, boy, if now's not the moment where we sort of rein things in. He said doing a live podcast through multiple <laughs> yeah. networks. Uh, yeah, cough. Um, but when, when it is 118 degrees in BC, you know that things are changing yeah. dramatically, yeah. Yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that people like Serbolt are making the effort to – make the connection tie up the, the what i wouldn't have i wouldn't have made the connection between time to first bite and the the impact that you might have on the environment so i've put it on the screen it's servebolt.com forward slash articles forward slash each of these words is separated by a hyphen servebolt on sustainable and green hosting i'll put it in the show notes so that you can see it but um yeah thank you for sharing that rem because that's great i don't thank know if um me too. I don't know if anybody else had something in the show notes that they wanted to share. I do. I just want to, speaking of the environment, um, it's great when people take care of the environment. One of the most important things for us all, though, I think, is to go into space as often as possible um, <laughs> and, you know, literally burn <laughs> thousands of gallons of uh, fuel uh, in order to go up and check out how round the earth is. Um, Richard Branson did it this week, he, um, and I believe that Jeff Bezos is doing it next week. There was a petition on... I don't know what the website was, but one of these websites where you can go and petition. And the, it, within about a day, 70,000 people had signed it. That was about two weeks ago, asking Jeff Bezos to not come back, which I just thought was quite <laughs> interesting. Um, this piece of content will be hosted on Amazon S3, so don't expect it to be around for long. Um, but anyway, I just thought it was fascinating. We have now got to the point where people with deep enough pockets can burn through money so that they can go and check out space. What, a, what an incredible thing that is. I don't... You know, d get rid of the environmental comment for the minute. Just take that in. A person like you with no training, just a deep pocket, that's the criteria, 
you can get on a spaceship now, pay some money, like going on a cruise, and from you can a, actually go into space. That's so weird. From a technology perspective, I think it's fascinating. Yeah. That, that mm -hmm. uh, That's like two seconds, and then I'm like, what a huge waste of, and I need to be careful not to cuss here, but yeah. what a huge waste of money and resources and energy and everything. Well, I'm glad you said that because that was my take on it as well. Fascinating from the point of view of uh, yeah. that it can be done. It's like that Jeff Goldblum thing in Jurassic Park. You know, nobody asked to, <laughs> whether yeah. whether we should do it. They just asked, can we do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we can do it. Well, we can and do it. with all the acquisitions going on in the WordPress arena, who do you think is going to be the first WordPress person to go to space? Oh, <laughs> Matt Mullenweg. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> apparently, he's got a, and I've forgotten the number, but it is in that article, I believe. Uh, so I believe it's 150,000, maybe pounds or dollars. I'm not sure, but it, it's, it's a kind yeah, of, it. yeah. yeah. So it's a considerable amount of money. The, the entire trip takes an hour. I believe that you're weightless for two minutes and then it re returns and returns and it behaves like a normal plane. So it's a very short lived experience. Um, but given all of that, I believe that ha the number I'm going to say 600, uh, but it could be wrong. 600 people who've already said we'll, we'll pay that. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm not one of them. I don't mm -hmm. seem to have £150,000 burning a hole in my pocket. And if I did, I'm sure I'd find other ways to, <laughs> to spend it. I'll just get a great big picture like Paul's got on the back of his wall there of mm -hmm. the galaxy mm -hmm. and then wear some clever goggles That's and just significantly go, Ooh. cheaper. Yeah, drink like some beer, bit... feel unstedy, like weightless. <laughs> yeah, and no, and no risk of getting dizzy and nauseous That's and all right. that. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's right. Anyway, there we go. Nobody else has got anything to add, I don't think. Thank you for joining us. Really appreciate it. We'll be doing it all again next week. Can't remember who's on next week at this point, but it'll be some lovely people, I'm sure. Um, Remkus, thank you so much. Cami, thank you very much indeed. And obviously, Paul, uh, here every week as the co-host. Really appreciate it. Paul, the platform survived till the end. We <laughs> haven't finished yet. Off. You have to press yeah. the button. Yeah, I've got to press the button. It presses <laughs> it for you. It's at this moment that, Cami, you don't know this. We, we have to do this awkward wave where and we don't know how long the awkward wave will go on, but if we start waving awkwardly now and I'll press the stop button and say, <laughs> have a nice have a nice week. See you later. <laughs>